Hi, this is Jessica DeMassa in the Guidewell Insights Lounge. I'm here at Exponential Medicine. And joining me right now, we have Deo Gracias Nizong Kiza. Welcome to the set here. Um, please introduce yourself for those watching at home. Tell us where you're from and um, what you do. My name is Deo Gracias Nizong Kiza. I serve as the founder and the CEO of Village Health Works, a grassroots organization that serves the poor in rural Burundi. We are a health organization, but we have integrated education, economic development programs in our health programs. And we are a 10-year-old organization today. So tell us a little bit about some of the trends that you're seeing integrating healthcare the way that you are and the place that you are. Well, we have seen quite a lot in the, in the past 10 years. Okay. Uh, we treat people from the rural community, the very poor people. We have seen a lot, a lot of mothers who come so desperate, and the children who suffer from malnutrition. Uh, we have to deal with the pastoral call, marasmus. We have to deal with the maternal child health uh, issues. Right. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to save mothers in childbirth because we have no access to C-section. We have no surgery, no operating uh, room yet. And uh, that can be really so heartbreaking, especially in the 21st century when you have the medical knowledge, medical technology available. And uh, my question is always, how come that we are un unable to save mother's life in childbirth? People dying from uh, past proton hemorrhage. Wouldn't that be cool if technology today would be available to everyone everywhere uh, so we have a lot of issues. We lose also a lot of patients who come uh, uh, suffering from hernia. We can't do that. When we transfer, we transfer these patients to places where they don't have enough medical equipment or even medical uh, personnel. So how can we do this? How can we help? How can we get the technologies that we see here? And even the ones, I mean, these are so far ahead. Even the ones that are already integrated and that we take for granted for here, how do we get right. them to you? Right. Well, you know, that's a great question. How do we get technology that is available in the world? It's, I don't think that uh, it's hard at all, given, again, how technology has been moving forward so quickly. Mm -hmm. You can reach anyone anywhere in, this corner, in the corner of every, every single planet. Right. Uh, you know, for example, we use community health workers. These community health workers are in the villages, are in the mountains that have no access to road. But they do not have a reliable internet. Right. They do not have uh, uh, solar power or electricity to charge cell phones so that they can call physicians or report on the patient, how the patient is doing. All these are really new technologies that are taken for granted in the developed world and available, but not available in the communities, in the countries where they need the most. Right. So I think that uh, uh, for you, uh, it's important to listen to our stories, the struggles and the challenges we face on, uh, on the ground, but at the same time, understanding that, for example, if a community health worker is able to find where a patient who is stuck in a rural area and unable to reach a hospital, how does that patient get to the hospital? And what kind of hospital, how equipped is that hospital? We have, for example, mothers who are pregnant and who have babies who have complications. And if you don't have ultrasound machine, portable one right. to see what is going on in the womb of the mother, what for? And yet these technologies exist, but that's not the end of the story. What happens when you have diagnosis, the mother or the child, both of them, they need to be saved right. and knowledge is available. So we are creating a space sure. for these technologies to be available mm -hmm. and those who are into technology can actually have a very comfortable place where they can apply the knowledge and to save people's lives. Wonderful, and it's nice that you're bringing this conversation to the forefront and to the stage here at Exponential Medicine. So I want to ask you one last question. I just want to know, what, what has you most optimistic about the future of healthcare? 
Well, what makes me feel optimistic is that everything, everything today, almost not everything, is known. The problems we deal with are really basic problems. If we can afford to go to the moon, <laughs> why are we unable to actually solve the problems that uh, have been uh, uh, making people suffer centuries ago? So I have a hope because this knowledge is available, right. and I have a hope because I truly believe that people who are skilled, compassionate, are out there. Right. They need information, they need to know where else this uh, knowledge and technologies they haven't reached. And if they know the story, they really act. So that gives me so much hope, and Wonderful. this is why I keep working with my colleagues and uh, using the opportunities that we have here to let you know Thank you. <laughs> what we deal with so that you can take it from there and that together we can truly change the world in health care. We can create, we can you know, bring justice and honor human dignity everywhere in the world. Deo Gracias, thank you. That's so beautiful. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you stopping by the Insights Lounge and sharing your message with us and sharing your message um, with really the world. I mean, we're going to put these up on the internet. So you, like, hopefully everybody will hear what you're saying and, and the message will resonate. Thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. This is Jessica DeMassa in the Guideville Insights Lounge at Singularity University's Exponential Medicine. Thank you.